let's take another example and to look at um, uh, vendor balls attractions and see if you can predict which molecule would have a higher boiling point. So if we take this molecule with five carbons and let's take a couple of other molecules. So if we put four carbons in a chain and attach the fifth carbon there and then attach hydrogens. And if we put three carbons in a chain and two carbons like that, and then fill in hydrogens. All right, so each carbon wants four bonds. So we're giving each carbon enough hydrogens to make four bonds. Okay, so first of all, what do all of these molecules have in common? Well, yeah, so they're all carbons and hydrogens and nothing else. Uh, but what else do they have in common? Well, they all have five carbons. And if you count the hydrogens, so the first one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And they all have 12 hydrogens, so they are all C5H12. <clears throat> um, which means they all have same molar mass. So these molecules would be better molecules to compare than the molecules in the first <clears throat> uh, video over Van der Waals attractions because molar mass can affect boiling point. So the heavier something is, the more likely it is to be a solid or a liquid than a gas <clears throat> but in this case all of these molecules have the same formula so they have the same molar mass so now if they have a difference in boiling point it's not due to molar mass it must be due to intermolecular attractions only okay so first of all um then so it's kind of annoying drawing these full structural formulas out so let's draw line formulas instead so if you picked up how to do that from the part one of this uh Van der Waals forces lecture. So if we take the first molecule and draw a line formula, so five carbons in the chain, one, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> and so the second molecule, so when you put your pencil down, that's carbon one and then up to, uh, let's try this again. So you put your pencil down, that's carbon one, up to two, down to three, up to four. And so then the fifth carbon is attached one carbon from the end so we could have drawn it like that or we could have drawn it like that it's all the same it's still a four carbon chain with one carbon branch one carbon from the end and the last one so we have we have one two three carbon sequence so if we do one two so oops sorry let's try this again so when you put your pencil down, that's carbon one. So one up to two, down to three. So that will be a three carbon sequence. And then the middle carbon has two carbons attached to it. So we could draw it like that if we wanted to. Or it'd be more commonly drawn like that. I guess it just looks prettier, but it's the same molecule. It's a, it's a three carbon sequence. <clears throat> one, two, three. <coughs> With two other carbons attached to carbon two, uh, just like here. So there's a one carbon and a one carbon sequence. One carbon and one carbon attached to the middle carbon. <clears throat> so just to see if you understand how to draw Vanderbilt or how to draw line formulas. And if you understood how to draw line formulas, then for example, how many hydrogens are on that carbon? Well, so carbon's got uh, that carbon's got one, two, three carbons attached to it. Carbon likes to have four bonds. So it has one hydrogen attached to it, right? Or if we take that carbon, how many carbons are attached to it? One, two, three, four. So how many hydrogens are on this middle carbon? No H, right? Since it's already got four carbons attached. Or if we took this one, right? How many hydrogens does that carbon have? Well, it's got two carbons attached to it because that's a carbon and that's a carbon, right? So 
So it's got two carbons attached. So it needs two more hydrogens to make uh, four bonds in octet. And if we do one more, so how about uh, this one? How many hydrogens are on that carbon? Well, again, every at the end of every line is a CH3, so that must be a CH3. Or another way to look at it is that carbon has one carbon attached to it. So then to make four bonds, it must have three hydrogens. Okay, so if we take these three, mo three molecules, which one do you think has the highest boiling point? And so again, so what does the electron density look like in the molecules? So if we have that carbon, that carb molecule, that one, and that one. So which molecule? So which molecule has more surface area? So this molecule has more carbons in sequence, so it's more linear. And this molecule is more spherical because all of the carbons stem off of the central carbon. So this has more surface area. So it'll have a higher boiling point, right? Because if you remember the more surface area, then when two molecules get close to each other, their electron densities will distort each other, and then that will create an induced dipole, and they'll have more induced dipole, induced dipole attractions. So again, this is reflected in boiling point. So this molecule, so which molecule would have the highest boiling point uh, would be the one on the left, and the one with the least surface area, the one on the right, would have the slowest boiling point. Okay, so this molecule's boiling point is 36 degrees Celsius. The one in the middle is 28 degrees Celsius. And this one, which is the most branched, is uh, 9 degrees Celsius. So basically, as carbon chain branching increases, boiling point decreases, Uh, because surface area decreases, therefore, then their walls attractions decrease. <clears throat> and so the less Vanderbilt's attractions are, the easier, what did we do this? Did I write this right? As carbon chain ink branching increases so this one is branched this is not branched so as carbon chain branching increases boiling point decreases uh, because surface area decreases right because there's less contact between the two molecules if the more spherical it is the less contact it is right to make a molecule boil boil you have to break those attractions and then molecules can escape into the gas phase by themselves Okay, so this concept of viscosity. Try this again. Well, maybe we won't. Okay, so this concept of viscosity. So what is viscosity? It's basically, basically a measure of a liquid's ability to flow. So what are some examples of viscous liquids? So some examples would be like honey, very viscous, oil, uh, anything else? Syrup? 
right, would be all examples of very viscous liquids. So how do you measure viscosity? Uh, it's pretty easy to measure. You use an instrument looks like this. It's what's called a Zahn cup. So you just put the liquid in and measure how long it takes. Oh, there you go. So you just measure how long it takes the liquid to, to drain from a Zahn cup. And so the units of viscosity is what's known as the centipoise. So water is the standard. Uh, so water has a viscosity of one centipoise at 20 degrees Celsius. And then basically everything else is compared to water. So you're not going to have to do any calculations with the viscosity. You just have to know what viscosity is. Okay, so if we take some, take an example. So if we take these three, three molecules, So I'll take those three molecules, uh, which one is most viscous? <clears throat> and so let's see, first of all, do you know how to interpret those structures? So how many carbons does each one have? So the first one has how many carbons? So this would be six carbons, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And this one would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 carbons. And this one, if you count all of those, 16, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, every break in the line is a carbon. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so which of those is going to be the most viscous? <clears throat> so, or the least viscous? So, um, so again, viscosity is a measure of a liquid's ability to flow. So if molecules are going to flow, the molecules have to slide by each other. And so if two molecules are sticky, if the more sticky they are, the less likely they are to flow by each other. So the molecule that's the most sticky is going to be the most viscous. All right, so which one do you think would be the most sticky? And that's going to be... Going to be the one with the most intermolecular attractions. So which one has the most intermolecular attractions? Well that's going to be this one, right? The one with the most surface area. Uh, because when two of those molecules approach each other and their electrons are distorted, then there's lots of intermolecular, there's lots of van der Waals attractions between them, so they're going to be attracted to each other and not want to flow by each other, so they're going to be very viscous. So the viscosity of the six carbon chain is 0.29 centipoise, so it's less viscous than water, so it would flow more easily than water. Uh, the 10 carbon chain is half as viscous as water, so it would also flow easier than water. And the 16 carbon chain is 3.34 centipoise, so it's uh, three, a little over three times as viscous as, uh, than water. 